Have you ever experienced something so crippling in your life that has made you feel broken? I have. Are you someone who has a giving heart but is struggling to feel good themselves? Are you consistently putting your needs aside to take care of everyone else? If so, you're not alone. Giving starts with giving to yourself so that you are able to give of yourself to other people. Isn't it time you took back control and discovered what makes you tick? Join me in my journey and find out how you can feel better about yourself, live your best life, and share that with others. Thinking of yourself, it doesn't make you selfish. It makes you brave. I'm Nelia, and this is the Giving Starts With You podcast. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Giving Starts With You podcast. Man, I am excited today. I've got to tell you, sometimes we meet people in our lives that we feel like we've known forever. And I've just been waiting and counting down the days to have my new friend, Lorenzo Payman on the show. How are you, Payman? I'm doing fantab- fantastically well. I'm uh, beyond grateful, beyond thankful, and I'm wonderful and super excited to be talking with you. You're such a wonderful, beautiful soul that uh, I, I was actually looking forward to it, you know? <laughs> Thank you so much. That's why I woke up earlier on a Saturday morning. I woke up at 7 o'clock. So, oops, I have something important in the morning, so it's 8.30 here. <laughs> yeah, so payment just moved to malaysia i mean literally just like a week or two ago maybe two weeks it's almost been three weeks now well i left canada i left canada on october 1st sorry on november 1st i've been traveling italy for a week two months in thailand and now i think i found finally my happy place the place i can call home because this place has everything we can do an entire show just on that but this podcast is not about malaysia so (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but thank you for waking up early and you know everybody knows I'm in just north of Toronto and it's almost 8 p.m. here on Friday night so thank you so much I could it's say so me. many yeah I could say so many things about payment but we have some stuff in common and I'll let you know that in a few minutes but I just want to jump right in let you guys know a little bit about who who this gentleman is so payment Lorenzo is the host and founder of an amazing, amazing podcast. It's called Leaders with a Heart. If you haven't heard of it, you need to listen, okay? Like, I'm trying to get that right off the top because this will change your life. Thank you. On Leaders with a Heart podcast, he showcases heart-centered entrepreneurs, people with goosebump-inducing stories to share their gift with the world, so they can inspire others to do good and make the world a better place one person at a time. Payman is a three-time number one international best-selling author. His first multi-authored book titled after his podcast, Leaders with a Heart, showcases some of the most inspiring stories from his podcast released successfully September 30th, 2020. It reached the number one best-selling rank in multiple countries and on 18 categories within the first week. So you know you've got to check out the book now, right? He's now working on volume two, which is scheduled to launch later on in the spring of 2023. And that's how I met Payman through his podcast. Payman loves, loves inspiring people, empowering them to go after their dreams. He's a connector, absolute amazing connector. And he loves bringing and connecting people together. He's an adventurer, explorer, avid traveler, and a humanist. He has lived in 11 countries on four continents, and he's not done yet. And he speaks six languages so far. One and one nice. of them, one of them is Portuguese. So that's one of the things we have in common. So Indeed. <laughs> I was so surprised when we broke out in Portuguese. But not only does he speak Portuguese, but he speaks a language even more important to me. A language of love, a language of the heart. He is genuinely one of the most caring individuals I have met online. And 
he his hometown is about an hour from me. So we've already made plans to meet in person. Welcome to the show, Payman. How are you today? Wow, I'm beyond blessed. And I got to say, this is I've been on podcast, a lot of podcasts. And this is by far the best uh, intro I've done. And I, and I will ask you, could I take this and use that as my own intro on my podcast, <laughs> <laughs> on my website? <laughs> sure, go ahead. <laughs> and I will give you the royalties, you know? <laughs> oh, I honestly, I am so honored. Um, Payment has been a big supporter of my show and a big supporter of my ideas. And he always reminds me that um, you can never dream too big. And that's one of the things I really, really love about him, honestly. Um, I really want you guys to understand where he comes from, where his journey began. Because another thing that we have in common is we both um, tragically lost our fathers. And those things have changed us. They've changed who we are. Um, and they've given us gifts that we didn't think could be in those situations. Um, so Payman, can you tell me a little bit about your story and, and how this all started on your journey? Well, how far do you want me to go back? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an overview. So I was originally born in Afghanistan. Um, my, my father was an archaeologist, geologist. He was one of the first people in Afghanistan back in the sixties to get a full, full scholarship to go study in France. I did his undergrad and postgrad in, in France in the sixties. And when the country was invaded in 79 by the communists, by the Soviets, and we all know that communists, they do not like intellectuals. So, uh, they went on a witch hunt, making all the intellectuals disappear if they're lucky, or if not, just shoot them on the spot. So my father was lucky, lucky that at the time he was working in France, and that was literally our our ticket to liberty that saved our life, our lives, my family. I was I was uh, four, my brother was three, my older sister was twenty eight days old, mm. my younger sister was even born. So we we had to leave everything behind us, and, and that that the way we left of Kabul, that alone was worthy of a book of a movie, and that's one of my greatest goals in life is to. To, uh, to compile a book or even a documentary of all the stories. You think my, my family story is incredible, but it's nothing because that's common. That's a story of millions and millions of families that, that had to literally leave everything behind and by all means leave the country to save their lives. I would love to uh, connect with a document, uh, well, I mean, with a movie maker or even a, uh, a, a pub publish a book myself showcasing the stories of the families and how they left, what they left, what the challenges they uh, they, they faced. So anyway, so this is how uh, my my background, then I grew up in France. Uh, when I was 14, my family moved to Canada. And uh, I will always be grateful for two countries, France, for saving our lives and Canada for giving me the opportunities. That's why I say I will all, Canada will always be very special for me. I'm a very proud Canadian, despite not being in agreement with how the country is being run right now. This is one of the reasons I left the country. There's many ways you can vote, but I will gladly always come. And I'm always say to anyone I meet, I am Canadian. I say it in a very loud and proud, <laughs> even though I'm sorry, I don't watch hockey. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> I grew up, with, I grew up with up someone in football, soccer, but anyways, so, uh, but I lived, as I said, I lived around the world because of my father. You know, my father, he gave me, me being the, the eldest, I was always very spoiled. I remember when he was going around the world and all his, as an archaeologist, all his uh, incredible sites, he would always bring me amazing gifts that none of the kids around me had, but I was always sharing it with others. That's one thing I had with me to share with people that didn't have from a very early age. But speaking of gifts, two gifts, the two most amazing, special, life-changing gifts my father gave me was one when I was four. Or three, he gave me a world atlas that instilled in me the love for for travel, for geography. He taught me the names of the countries, the capitals of the uh, of pretty much most of the the world. By the time I was three and a half, four, so when I first stepped into school, all the uh, you know that's why geography has always been my favorite subject in school. And then the second big, greatest life changing gift my father gave me. I don't know if you want me to talk about that now or later on, is just before his passing. Mm. You know. I was never religious, but I always, always uh, believed in God. And since the start of the pandemic, I had a spiritual awakening. I started to understand and realize a few deep, powerful things about life. One of them is that life is a school. We are here to learn lessons, to to uh, to grow. And before my awakening, 
when something bad happened to me, I I sorry, and what I another powerful lesson I learned is the power of questions and asking the right questions. Mm. Before when something bad happened to me, I was asking the wrong question. Why me? What did I do to deserve this? Why, why, why? So whining a little, you know, whatever. I'm not gonna say the word, but you know what I mean. And uh, instead, now I look at things from a higher perspective, from a spiritual eye, and I say, what is this trying to teach me? What is a lesson for me to learn through this? So, uh, in this, and in, in the fall of 2020, my father got diagnosed with cancer. The summer before, my father was uh, about to be 80. He was very active, very fit. Even the the summer before, when we went on on walks, I'm half his age and I'm very active. Uh, I'm very fit. I had a hard time keeping up uh, pace with him. But then here comes a man that once he started, once he he had his sickness, he couldn't even go from his bed to his bathroom. I had to carry him on my shoulder. I used to be very impatient. I used to blow up for no reason. So I remember sometime when I replay those scenes in my mind. I really want to, I, I, I don't feel proud of me. I, I sometimes want to punch myself. I was telling him, come on, hurry up. We don't have all time here. Come on, come on. At first I was saying this, which is horrible. But then I started realizing, hey, wait a second. This is a man that is very sick. Probably is, is dying. Need to be more patient. So that basically, everything happens for to, to teach each lesson to grow. And that allowed me to open my heart to become more compassionate, more patient. And that for me was the ultimate gift. My father left me before he he, he ascended to uh, to basically open my heart to become much more poised, calm, uh, compassionate. So uh, so even through tragedy, through a divorce, through whatever life throws at us, sure it hurts a lot. But ask yourself, what is this trying to teach me? What is a lesson for me to learn through this? And once you look at things from this perspective, you will understand it's for your greatest good. Everything happens for you, not to you. Even to the to, to the most challenging, the most incredible, painful tragedy, like the loss of a loved one. There is always a blessing. Nothing happens to punish you. There's no punishment. There's no, we're not being judged. It's all for us to grow because the soul is like a canva. It wants to experience everything. Mm. Like, for example, I will not, if you want, I can talk about that. Right now, I'm beyond blessed. I live the life I always wanted. But four years ago, I literally ran out of money. I was living on $20 a week in one of the most expensive cities in the world, Hong Kong. If it wasn't for the kindness of one of my friends who allowed me to crash on his couch, I would have been literally on the streets. But yet, I will not change that because those were some of my happiest moments because that, again, what was, what was the lesson for me to learn to that? What was that trying to teach me? That, hey, you can be happy without money, even in the most expensive seat in the world. And that gave me a sense of confidence, not cockiness, confidence that, hey, that honestly, I felt invincible. Nothing can touch me. Mm. Oh, you want to fire me? Okay, do it. You want to call the cops? Here's my phone. You can call them on my phone if you want. When you, get, when you become that way, you become incredibly powerful, powerful for your own good, not powerful in a cocky way, but in a good way that nothing and no one can touch you. See, everybody sees the, the shiny thing, but nobody sees just like the iceberg. We want to see the tip of it. We don't see all the hard work that came. From, and that's why I will never change. Those are some of the mo most amazing times when I was living on $20 a week, when my splurge moment of the week was going to McDonald's and getting the cheapest item, which was the, uh, what is it? The the, the 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 cheeseburger. That was my happy moment of the week. But I would not change it. Gratitude. Yes, I would not change it because it's in those moments that. And this is what I said. For me, life. I see life as a beautiful, delicious five-star Michelin buffet. Not only for us to try all kinds of wonderful dishes physically, but also to experience all kinds of experiences. This is what life is about. I want to be as rich as possible in experiences. I don't care about material things. Sure, it's, sure, it's nice. But for me, the material things is the icing on the cake. It's not the cake. The cake is experiences, the lessons, uh, the, the positive ones, the impact, making people, inspiring people, empowering people, doing good. And the and more you have, thing. the more you have, the less you appreciate it. You know, see, guys, okay, so for you at home or in the car or wherever you're listening, 
Okay, we just started and already I'm sure that you're in love with Payman as much as I am because already just in the way he speaks and how passionate he is about life, it just, it makes my heart smile just in what he was explaining. Thank you for sharing that story because I know how hard it is. I lost my father as well. And although it took me many, many years to find the gift, there is always something. And you said your father, he taught you in this situation to be more patient, more grateful, more compassionate. And when my father passed away, he taught me to live better and to want more from myself, to demand more of myself because he died at 59. So I felt he didn't have the chance to do so many of the things that I can for other people. So that's another thing I always felt connected us, that, that pain, but then that positive message and payment is just I love hearing you speak because it's like the words just come out like like hearts you know what I mean like it's just like you're so happy to share with everybody I know that you really care about what you're doing and you really care about the work that you do and the people that you help it's not just a gimmick it's not just fake oh. You know? you know, I don't speak, I don't speak. And this is what I teach my students. Don't, don't speak from, from a script. Never skip, never speak from a script. Don't even speak with your mouth. Speak from the heart. Sometimes mm -hmm. when I listen and rewatch my own podcast episodes, I say, wait a second. Did I really say that? Where the hell is that coming from? It's almost as if the information is being channeled through me. Sometimes I don't even recognize myself. I was having exact same conversation with a wonderful gentleman I had on a podcast yesterday. But, you know, I just want to step back a little bit. I want to say two things I want to share. One, one of my, one of the most beautiful quotes I, I heard was yesterday on Instagram by one of the most amazing souls, uh, Kobe Bryant. He said, what's your definition of greatness? I said, it's to inspire the person next to you. How can you inspire someone to inspire another person and so on and so forth? And that creates something forever. That's true legacy. That is true. The true definition, the, the most amazing definition of greatness I've ever heard. That's, and that's for me, beautiful. this is, that espouses what I'm doing because my, my, my goal, my vision with my podcast, with my books, with everything I do is to inspire other entrepreneurs to do good. Even if, for example, not any single individual can change the world, but if me and you, if me sharing my story and you sharing yours on my podcast, we can inspire just one person to do good. And that person goes on to inspire another person and so on and so forth. Then together we can create a ripple effect that's going to change the frequency, vibration, energy of this planet towards a more positive direction. This is my ultimate goal. This I is why that. I started this podcast. I love that. And I'll even challenge you and say that, although I agree 100%, I don't think it's enough. I don't think we could just, just helping one is enough. I know that we have the power to help more and more and more, but it ha it starts with one for sure. And this, and the ears were a beautiful principle that I even as part of my branding, the one plus one equals 11. Two, uh, in math, one plus one is two, but in real life, when two people come together with same vision, same mentality, same same goal, it doesn't become two, it becomes 11. Three people together is not three, but 111. Four people together is not four, but 1,111. It expands exponentially. So this is what we can do by me and you talking this beautiful conversation, me sharing my story, you sharing yours. The one plus one becomes an effect. Mm -hmm. The one plus one plus one plus one. So this is how we can you know, exponentially uh, explode this to to worldwide and to the universe. Payman, I wanted to ask you, of all the names that you could have chosen and all the topics for your podcast, why Leaders with the Heart? What is it you really, what's the message you really want people to know? When you, you help know, somebody come on your show, you know what I mean? Like, what is the main thing because there's a lot of people out there that are unhappy there's a lot of people out there you know that are miserable but have a good heart and they sometimes are afraid to share it's a beautiful question i had that same question that same conversation yesterday with a guest on my oh. podcast and they before with a friend i met here she came here she saw my book she wow this is with a heart it's a beautiful name so well that's my that's my book wow that's my brand that's my podcast really wow she was blown away i said I said, why? I said, because, you know, when I talk to people on my podcast, 
sure, we talk about your achievements, your professional life, your business and all that. But what I'm really interested in is to see who, who for example, who's Nelia as a person, as a human being. Because if you can't connect with a, with a person as a human being, you don't care what achievement they are. You're not going to do business with them. And business, ultimately, is not a numbers game. It's a relationship nurturing process. On my podcast, when I bring a guest, I want to have a look under the hood, so to speak, to see what's in your heart, to have a heart talk conversation, hence the name Leaders with a Heart. Because my podcast is about not just entrepreneurs who are building a you know, profit-driven business, but impact-driven, cost-driven, purpose-driven. This is what the, the, this, these are my crowd, my crowd, these are my, this is my tribe. These are the type of people I want to know and give more visibility so that together we can, you know, inspire more people. And in the words of the eternal Kobe, Kobe to create greatness around us, to inspire others. I Does love, that answer your question? Yes, I love that so much because sometimes there are people out there who have a great heart, but they don't consider themselves leaders. So the fact that you said they're leading with their heart, that's very powerful to me because that means you actually actively have to be trying to change things around you. You know, so and I encourage people to do that. Yes. And, uh, you know, you don't have to, to be a leader, you don't have to be a global, you know, icon or whatever. As long as you can influence positively and inspire, empower just one person, even if that person initially is just yourself. You know, one of the things that one of the most tragic things I, I've, I've, I've come across, especially on my podcast and talking to people and my coaching business is people, and I've been guilty of that myself. We don't value our 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 skills. We don't we take them for granted. We, you know, on in my podcast and academy, at the end of the, the the program, I ask all my students, "What was the number one thing holding you back from starting your podcast?" The most common response is. Who am I to have a podcast? Mm. Who am I? I, I'm, I don't have, uh, I'm, not, I'm not a PhD. I don't have a million followers. I'm not the best looker. I don't have whatever. Who am I to, to uh, who's going to listen to me? I don't have a story. Yeah. Exactly. I thank you. I don't have a story. And this really broke my heart because I was like that. But then I, I again, another powerful realization I had since my awakening. You know, life is a school. We all go through a fair share of uh, pain, tragedy, heartbreaks. Sure, there's a lot when we go through that, but then they become our story. Then our story becomes our gift. Then our gift becomes our the ultimate thing is it becomes our responsibility. Mm -hmm. Because if we were to only learn the lesson and become a better person, sure, it's a good start, but we'd only be utilizing maybe 10% of the full potential. The 90% is and sharing those gifts with others so you can help others, inspire others. Elevate others so that collectively we can all rise. So this is the ultimate, from my understanding, the ultimate purpose of life. We all come here. We all have a story. We all have a mission, uh, you know, a lesson to share with others. This is the ultimate, our ultimate gift to the world. So yes, you you do. The fact that you've made it this far in life, even if you're just so-called an average office worker, whatever, a farmer, doesn't matter what you do. You have a story and your story matters and it needs to be shared far and wide. Because the fact that you made it this far in life, and this planet is not an easy world. It is the toughest school of all. The fact that you've made it this far, congratulations, big time brother or sister. And that yeah. needs to be shared. You need and to sharing, embrace it. And sharing it is like therapy sharing. for other people. Yes. Because yes. somebody out there is going to resonate and you're going to help people just in sharing your story. You don't have to have... I know you agree, but I know there's some people they don't understand. You don't have to have money to give gifts. You don't no, have to, exactly. to to create impact. Even you're telling your story, even sharing that is such a beautiful gift. This is the ultimate gift we can all leave for the world. This is part of our contribution to greatness. Remember Colby's, uh, Colby's uh, quote? Mm -hmm. is to inspire the person next to you to do good and that person to inspire someone else. Even if that is just, for example, we walk on the street, we see someone homeless, someone down. Hey, how's going? Treat them with dignity. What's mm. your name? How's your day? Just to give them back the hope and to, to the hope and humanity. Hey, there's still good out there. That conversation, that that thirty second one conversation for you is nothing. For that person, that can make their day. That can completely 
we ignite uh, the faith in them and humanity, and that can start a chain reaction for them to get themselves back up. Mm. And simple as that. Payman, I'm just try- I'm just thinking. You know, so many times, like if people are listening at home and they're like, "Yeah, I know, I've heard that before." You know, I know that I know that if I'm nice to somebody, it's going to help them. But why don't people always do it? Like, you know, that's the part. I'm struggling with one person who does and one person who doesn't, it doesn't mean one person is better than the other. Maybe they're afraid of something or maybe they forget and they don't initiate. It's okay. You know, it doesn't have to be something as big as going strike conversation with with a stranger, even a smile, even courtesy, holding the door for them or whatever, saying, thank you, please, whatever it is, or just sending them. You see someone that is struggling on the street just in your mind, just say, I'm, I'm sending you all the blessings, all the the, the healing, all the whatever uh, vibes of the world. Just in your mind, a small prayer, 10 seconds, that alone. Maybe she will not hear it physically, but at the soul level, the universe will, will, will see it. Will, mm-hmm. And whatever you put in, you get back 10, 10 times more. And payment, I wanted to ask you, because I know you're, you've are you lived around the world, but sometimes people are, are afraid to travel because you hear about... Oh. You hear about hostility and war and different um, forces fighting against each other in different parts of the world. But tell me if I'm wrong. When you go to these countries, it's not the way it's played out always in the news. The number one piece of advice I can tell give anyone is do not listen or watch the news. It's 99% of it's fake news, it's false, it's all about the news. The media have only one goal, and that goal is to keep you in fear, to keep you in control. So I I stopped, and this was one of the most powerful advice I've ever received is stop watching the news because the news is going to make you upset, pissed off about things you have no control over. Instead, I I focus on things I control and it matters to me, myself, my health, my hobbies, my business, my family, my friends. Focus on that instead. Mm. There's already enough negativity around the world. And honestly, the world is beautiful. People are very, uh, you know, people... The world is a mirror of you. If you're nice, then they will be nice to you. If you're mean to them, they will be mean to you. Regardless of whether you speak the language or not, people can 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 perceive, you know, your vibe, your your, your facial expression. Like when I lived in China, I didn't speak a lick of Chinese, but yet I was able to communicate just with words, just smiling. I will I will share one funny story. First night I arrived in China, I didn't have a SIM card. Of course, I don't speak Chinese. I need to eat. I went to a restaurant with a friend of mine that I met a colleague. The all the menus are in Chinese. There's no pictures, so good luck. So what I wanted to do, I wanted some chicken. What do you do? I just said, pak, 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 pak. I just did this. My buddy was more ingenious. He wanted some uh, some uh, some crab, so he just uh, took a napkin. I don't know how he managed to make the 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 the, the waitress understand that he wanted a pen. He just drew a crab on a napkin. And as far as side dishes, I just stood up, went around the restaurant, just started pointing. Tick, 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 tick. Hey, you got to do what you got to do to eat. You know what I mean? You got to be creative. That's amazing. I love it. You know, when we kids, we love playing. We love doing, uh, uh, you know, um, adventure. When you travel, you're being a kid again. It's, it's part of adventure. The things we take for granted, like going, ordering food, going to the, to the mall or whatever. It becomes like, it takes you back to when you're a kid. It, it gives you back your playfulness. And one thing I say, whatever you do, never mm. control the kid in you. The kid in you is the uh, the source of life in you. The moment you suppress that, you might as well just call it a day and just check yeah. out of life because that's the whole point of it. Keep that kid inside of you alive because that's your that's your that's your fire. That's your that's your life. That's your energy. The moment you suppress that, you have no business in this world. Oh, that's what's going to get you through those tough times. And 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 traveling is what's going to bring that kid. Yeah so much more alive so i will tell people two things to really be happy in this world one smile as much as you can smiling is the best medicine in the world i actually saw a doctor say if everyone in the world were to were to smile and laugh one hour a day if sorry if if smile and laughing were made mandatory for one hour a day for each person in this world within 30 days 95 percent of the ailments would disappear wow because when you smile you make your body you make your body hostile for sickness. What causes sickness is fear, stress. Yeah. But when you when you smile, 
you, you defeat that. You don't, you make it hostile for, for, for fear, for, uh, for stress. So again, smile, number one. And number two, travel, see the world. Yeah, do experience the life. Do, yeah. Be as rich as you can and you want and experiences because this is ultimately why you're here. The money, the house, the car, that's nice, but that's the icing. And you cannot take that with you. But the memories, nobody can take them away from you. Nobody. Oh, you're so, that, you're at least so that's right. My approach. That's no, I love it. And me too. I love that. And the reason why I wanted to ask you about the traveling was because for me, the traveling really brings out the kindness. Like you said, I think people think are yes. afraid and they think, oh my God, but we're so different. And I think the more you travel and the more kindness you share, the more you get back, but the more similar you realize all human beings are. Totally. doesn't matter wh where you go, whether you're black, white, green, Chinese, American, Afghan, whatever, Brazilian. People are people. They all want to be respected, cared, loved, happy. They want to be able to provide for their family. They want to be able to, to enjoy themselves, to laugh. Yeah. But ultimately, another beautiful, beautiful benefit of traveling is it drastically elevates the quality of your lifestyle. We were just talking before coming here. Right now, the cost of living in Canada and the U.S. and most of the Western world is going through the roof. I was telling her, I mean, in Toronto, a studio, say 40 minutes from, from downtown, is like $3,000 if you get a deal, if you're lucky. $4,000, $3,500, $4,000. That's more than the norm right now. And here, I'm staying at the heart of Kuala Lumpur, one of the most beautiful cities in, in Asia and the world. I can see... All the main, you know, what do you call it? The main uh, skyline from my living room, from my bedroom. Imagine staying right by, for those of the familiar with uh, Toronto, right by the CN Tower. Having a condo, you can see the tower from your living room, from your balcony, from your bedroom, from, from your bathroom, from everywhere. Staying there, eating out at nice restaurants, any meal you want, without concern for any cost. By, by going abroad... You multiply the quality of your life by three or four. Like, for example, one Canadian dollar, which is which has lost a lot of value lately, but still here, it still holds power here. It's 3.3 .3 ringgit. Any price you go, you see here, it's exactly what you would pay in Canada, but in Canadian dollar. But here you pay a third of it because the, the money is three times weaker. And this is called geographical arbitrage. You bring your, 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 um, your strong currency and you live in a place where the currency is not as, as strong. You drastically elevate the quality of your lifestyle. Like the place I'm staying here on Airbnb is 2000 Canadian, mm -hmm. which for here is expensive. But in Toronto, even a room, a shared room in a house is like 1200, 1500. The studio is 3000, three, uh, 3, 4000. And you get to meet you guys, fantastic people. Put yourself people. in a position. <laughs> yeah. And people you meet, people. One thing I noticed coming back in, in Canada and Toronto, it's very difficult to make new friendships. Mm. It's very difficult to make new friendships, to get into new circles. But in here, because the locals are very welcoming and embracing, mm. the expats, they're much more welcoming as well. They understand that uh, you're all in the same boat. They're willing to help you. Whether you're just uh, starting your life and they're a diplomat or whatever, they will take you under their wing. Good luck trying to get into that in Toronto, New York, or whatever. You're not going to yeah. get anywhere near that. I, I think but it's just here, a big city the connections, mentality. Networking. Mm -hmm. I'm in a big city here. I'm in a massive yeah. city here. It's, it's, a, it's a metropolis, Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. But yet people are very, it's a different mindset. It's yeah. very relaxed. Like I told you, I left Canada on November 1st. I haven't cooked since then. I don't know if you can count making a salad and cutting <laughs> cutting some uh, some uh, veggies and some smoked salmon. That's a close I came to cooking here. But other than that, I eat out all the time. I don't look at the prices. Like I was telling you, right by the, uh, by, uh, the Sheraton, right outside my place, in downtown, imagine having a pizza right by the CN Tower out on a patio in a nice place. It's going to be at least $50, $60. I had that the other day. It was four freaking Canadian dollars. The pizza. A big uh, beef, uh, what do you call it? Beef uh, uh, pe beef pepperoni pizza. For oh, 20, yes. uh, 20 minutes. I had one big jug of uh, freshly squeezed um, uh, apple juice. Not from a can. Not processed. Real apple juice. The entire bill was like five Canadian. 
It was so good. I went for Which round two. Just like two. three US or something. It's ridiculous. Yes, yes, yes. So, so living I'm saying, better. guys. Oh, oh, that's an understatement. You live honestly here on two thousand dollars. You're living a lifestyle that would take you ten to fifteen thousand dollars to live back home. And like the place I'm, the place I'm staying here. You could not even be able to find something like this in Toronto. And even if you were, you would only be able to to enjoy it for two or three months uh, a year. We have probably the most amazing, beautiful rooftop uh, pool that I've ever seen in my life here, right in my building. Uh, I'm I'm sure you've seen on my I on have. my stories. It's amazing. I'm just obsessed with this. Obsessed. You've convinced me. The skyline, all the skyline, and you know what? I'm only paying on Airbnb is like two thousand dollars Canadian. That's Airbnb. If you were to stay here and 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 get a one year lease, mm. you can slash that by fifty percent. So that's what I'm I telling you guys. You, I think, Payman, you just want some visitors. I think you just want some of us to come down and hang out. Because the reason why I want, I'm asking you this is because you and I are very passionate about people living out their dreams. Inspiring and them, yes. That's what you're doing. Like, you don't just teach it. You live it. And you're telling yes. people it's not more expensive to get what you want. It's actually less. Strip back and just focus on what it is that makes you happy. I will tell you one thing. Before leaving Toronto, Canada, I was spending four thousand dollars Canadian, three thousand US, without leaving the house. I was not going uh, dining, uh, dining out or anything. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Four thousand dollars. Just my my freaking cell phone bill was like hundred twenty dollars for twenty GB. Here I'm paying. And that's just $10. you. That's just you, yeah. one person. Here I'm paying ten dollars. Ten dollars. Ten Canadian dollars, which is like seven fifty US for twenty GB. If I want, when I was in Thailand, I was paying. I kid you not, I was paying, I paid, I got a plan for three months, 20 US dollars. I got 100 GB per month. Yeah, for 20 crazy. US for three months, for three months total. I know, and Imagine I just got would, mine. I just got my bill, it was like $400 and there's no extras on it for the family. No, it's like, you want to add crazy. a voicemail, that's an extra $20. Everything is extra. It's robbery. But here, you can actually live here. You can live on the, what you pay just probably for if you have a house just for your property tax and maintenance that you can live really well in and and the and the primest place in uh, in town here mm. just on that and if you don't want to live in the primest real estate then you save even oh. more money you know like it's okay <laughs> friends are t local friends are telling me if i were to go just a couple of blocks outside of the uh, the klcc the art of uh, kuala lumpur I can get the nice furnished two bedroom or one bedroom for 500 a month, 500 US. Yeah, that's crazy. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And it's like a dream. Yeah. And, you know, but maybe people have heard, oh, it's just, it's a poor place or oh. you know, people can't. And just don't believe what you hear. You know, if it's something you really believe in and it's something you really want to do and it's going to make you happy. Life is too short not to be happy, not to lead with your heart, not to help people along your journey. Like I'm sure you have so many stories about your travels, just connecting because you're such a good connector. Just do it. You know, this place is far, far, far from being poor. It's, it would put uh, New York City, Manhattan. I mean, New York City outside of Manhattan is like third world, third world place. Seriously, the uh, potholes on the streets, uh, uh, the zero safety and all that. You can walk at night. Dress nice, nice watch, money in your pocket, walking with your phone on, on, on your hand with zero concern for safety. That's one other thing I really love about Asia. It's incredibly safe. Now Toronto is getting crazy, crazy dangerous. Yeah. I keep hearing, you know, random attacks on the TTC from crazy on, on, on random people. Mm, it's crazy. It's what, one of the nice. things you said that I really loved about Malaysia was the people. You said... People live in peace, different cultures, different religions. Malaysia is a multi, multi country, uh, multi uh, cultural country because there's three main ethnicities here. You have the, the Malays, you have the Muslim, it's a Muslim country. And then you have the Chinese and the Indi Indians, massive communities. And then you have all these massive expats. Everybody is living in peace and harmony together. Mm. You don't this hear is that how on the perfect... news. No, seriously. I haven't heard of any crime. The only crime I hear from time to time is like maybe 
pickpockets of people that are really being careless. That can happen anywhere. But other than that, you know, random attacks or, God forbid, shooting as, as you have in the U.S., none of that here. And security is very, very, very strict here, very strong, very good. Slightest crime, they hit hard. Mm. They don't give you, oh, we have to, you know, turn around the pot and, oh, we have to be politically correct. There's no political correctness here. It's straight to your face. And this mm. is what I really love about it. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a breath of fresh air here. Mm. Have you interviewed anybody in Malaysia yet for your podcast? Any new leaders with a heart that you've met? Actually, yes. Actually, yes. I'm go. I'm. I'm going to events and meeting incredible people. I'm just in the process of lining them up and doing. Uh, I. I will have some incredible, incredible guests straight from here. I mean, anyone that you meet abroad, especially an expat, they have phenomenal stories. I was invited to my friend. American friend here to a to a to a house party two weeks ago. Check this. Even though I don't agree with this organization, one of the guys is one of the the, the CFOs of the WHO. Mm. A couple of guys worked for the EU, European Union. A couple of guys worked for the uh, UNESCO. And all of them were very hum very humble, normal people, very friendly, very welcoming. Even though I never met these guys as soon as my friend introduced me to them they they took me as if i was a long a long lost brothers or brother mm. coming yeah. in oh come help yourself there was a lot of food barbecue drink help yourself it's your house mm. i mean you don't get that and back home you don't get invited to those kind of uh i don't know about others but i didn't and trying mm. to get into that kind of circle good luck hey man i wanted to ask you you had said early on in our interview that um, you used to be more impatient and you oh, used to be more judgmental, maybe, perhaps. Um, how is your life different now than it used to be when you had your awakening? Like, I can't even recognize myself. You know, it's, it was two different people. That, that, that part of me is dead. That person is dead because I have nothing in common with that person anymore. Mm. Wow. That person was, uh, no, it's like, but you know what? I would not change it because yeah. everything happens for a reason and at the right time. There's, I don't judge because we are not here to judge. Mm -hmm. I'm a, we are all on our own path. Just like in school, you have one student that is more advanced than the other. You know, everybody's going to get there, but each person at their own time. Like, for right. example, this is one yeah. thing I used in to, way. as soon as I had, when I started having, before I used to, you know, try to, impose my idea on others hey this is for your best interest do this do this no let them when they're ready they will embrace it if they're not ready they will reject it and they will reject you mm. and violently sometimes yeah we're not in the business of convincing we're no. in the business of showing people what is possible and inviting expanding their horizons their mindset yes yes so no it's it's a, it's a transformation uh, life is a transformational journey and in business as i like saying the two greatest benefits of business are one, the impact you make in the lives of people. And number two, the wonderful friendships you build. Mm -hmm. The money is the icing. The cake, the real cake is, the, again, the impact and the relationships. The connection. And, 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 and who you become in the process. I forgot to add that, you know? Yeah, because it does change you. The people that you surround yourself with, it does change you. So you know yes. how the podcast is called Giving Starts With You. So would you agree... Yes. Would you agree that you are unable to help other people unless you help yourself? A billion percent, you know, because if you're not, one thing that I understood now, I say everyone, it's okay to be selfish. Think of yourself because, and, 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 I, and I say selfish, quote unquote, because you need to take care, of, take care of yourself. If you're not your best version, you will not be of any value. You will not be able to do any good. You know, this is why in the plane, they say, in case of emergency, put your own oxygen mask first before even your infant. Because if you cannot help yourself, you won't be able to help anyone else. Mm. You know? So the, and that applies to, to everything. And for example, when I lost my father, it really affected me. But then I, I realized the best way for me to honor my father and my mother and everybody that believed in me was for me to become the very best version of me and to be happy. Mm. not to cry not to be sad because when you cry and you're sad sure we wanted to cry a little bit in the beginning and be sad get it off our chest but ultimately be happy so because they're always around they always see you mm. be happy when you're happy when you when you're shining they shine 
they're happy. If you're not, they're not. And the, the people around you, you want to be the very best version of you so that you can be of, of value. You can be, you can be so useful to, to people around you and to society. Mm, productive. I love, I love so that. Think of, and this is why I tell people the most important, the most special person in the world is yourself. And that's not being selfish. Because if you're not loving yourself, caring about you, nobody will. You know, I say that in the trailer of the show that being self, um, thinking of yourself isn't selfish. It's brave. It takes some guts. Oh, yes. That's beautiful. Absolutely. Because we're always told, oh, think of me, make other people happy, put other people first. I used to do that for the first part of my life and now, and I have nothing to show for it. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm being blunt. You want to have something to show for it, not just materially, but also fulfillment, happiness, joy. Do for yourself. Make yourself happy. Happiness is an internal job. No one can make yes. you happy. True happiness. I love that. Not just, uh, I love it. And, I, you, you know, I completely agree with you. And it took me a long time to figure that out. But once you do, it's like night and day. My favorite uncle said to me, I was grieving for 12 years. I was stopped my life after my father passed away. And he said to me, just because you move on doesn't mean you forget the people you lost. Exactly. But you are alive. You are living right now. Live and live your life with people who are living alongside you. You know, the show must go on. Just like the words of the eternal Freddie Mercury. The show must go on. Yeah. You know, so. Heyman, tell me a little bit about your book. Where can people find it? Well, this is my beautiful book, Leaders with Heart. is a, a, a compilation of the the most powerful, inspiring, and goosebump inducing stories of the first two years of my podcast and over 200 episodes. And it's a phenomenal book. Uh, it's on Amazon, um, both Kindle and uh, and uh, paperback. And 100% um, of the proceeds go to charity. So me and the publisher, we don't make a penny. And I will tell one thing. Selling books like this may, will not make you rich, but the book itself will make you a lot of money through clients. I've got so many people approach me because of through this book, because the book is the ultimate business card. Nobody throws away a book. Mm -hmm. Imagine you go to, to, a, to a meeting, to a conference. Hey, Nelly, it was awesome talking to you. Can I have your, book, your, your business card? Sorry, I don't have a business card, but here's my book. Mm. Mind blown. That in, your, in their mind automatically elevates you as being an expert, a leader, an authority without you saying a single word. And they get to really trust you because they can see through the words and the emotion who you are, you know, especially yes. if you write in that way. You know, these yes. are stories of love. So, of course, it's a gift for the reader as well. It's not like you're just giving them a piece of paper. You're actually inviting them into your heart, into your world, into your stories. Yeah, so go, if, you know, publishing a book nowadays has never been easier. And this book, I didn't write it. It has my name on it. I have a chapter, but it's a collection of people writing their own chapters. The fastest and one of the most amazing, powerful life hacks, business hacks I heard is while listening to a podcast, a guy said, the fastest, most efficient way to publish your first and next book is through a podcast. Mm -hmm. I was writing a book in summer of 2020, sorry, riding a, my bike. Uh, and both me and the host, we had the same reaction. Wow. What do you mean? Well, glad you asked. Let me explain to you. A 200 page book is about 60,000 words. Roughly speaking, now one 30-minute podcast episode is 6,000 words. So as long as you release just one lousy 30-minute podcast episode a week within three months, it's a mathematical certainty you have enough content for a book. Give it another month to, to package it, to promote it, to market it. So every four months, you can be in a position to release one of these, one book, uh, so four books a year. Imagine what, what that can do to your business. It's going to make competition completely irrelevant. And this is why people need to connect with you. So I know you're offering a meet and greet call with people. Yes. Um, you'd love to hear their story um, and see if they'd be a good fit. Maybe they will be a great fit for your podcast. Maybe they have I'm a always, story. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a story. 
and their story is worth sharing. And I'm always in the look for amazing, inspiring, goosebumps inducing stories to showcase them in my podcast. And then if if they're ready, if they want, if at that stage, help them with sharing the story on a much bigger platform, either to a podcast, launching their own podcast, or, or getting the story in a book, in, in one of my books. So uh, for me, it's all about my ultimate motto is I help art-centered entrepreneurs with powerful messages and beautiful hearts to win. I want these kind of people to win. And by winning, it's to get, give their, their powerful message, their beautiful story, more visibility. So they can make as much money as possible to have a bigger impact around them. And I'll tell you guys, I was on uh, Payment's show and it's it's got to be one of the top three shows I've been on, if not the top show. And I okay. just loved every moment of our conversation. And ever since, I didn't just feel like a guest. He has supported me in everything that I'm doing ever since, whether it's through a kind message or through expansion of ideas and interest in helping uh, projects. And he's really uh, very genuine. And so, you know, reach out okay. to him, reach out. Like, what's the best way people can get a hold of you? Uh, Facebook. Um, I um, I can leave my uh, my link directly on uh, on the show notes. I'll send that. Well, you already have my Facebook, so you can just leave a yeah. link to my profile. My Calendly, even though I've been having issues with Calendly, even though now I'm in Asia, I updated my availability, and the time zone is still showing me <laughs> uh, calls at like uh, availability at like four o'clock in the morning and all that. That would have worked if I was back home in Canada, but not at four o'clock. So I'm going to take a call at four o'clock. <laughs> you know. But that's okay. This worked. 8 p.m. my times, 8 a.m. your time or so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So 8 p.m. your sorry. Uh, we started at uh, 8:30, which is 7:30 p.m. your time. So there's a yeah 13-hour time difference between me and Eastern time. So whatever time is for you, if you're Eastern time, add one and the reverse. And it's funny because even though it's 13-hour yeah. difference, we both still look half awake. So we're great. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I had this conversation earlier with, with another lady that wants to get on my podcast. She booked a call at seven o'clock. So, well, I'd love to get on a call at seven o'clock, but here's seven o'clock in the tropics. It's still dark. <laughs> <laughs> still dark. Is there anything that we didn't get a chance to talk about, uh, Payman, that you would like to, to end with today? There's so many, but um, if there's anything that you can think of, I'd be happy to come back. And I definitely want you to come back on my podcast. Thank you. Share how your trip in Guatemala last one wa went and how the next one is coming. And, um, well, there's, if people want to get, you know, they can also check my, my YouTube channel of the same name, Leaders with a Heart. Yes. And, uh, yeah, I guess there's a lot more we can talk about. If you want to know about traveling, about drastically elevating the quality of your lifestyle yes yes anything to do about living abroad traveling abroad i would be happy to talk to you because i live this i've been traveling i was actually pretty much born in a family of travelers my mother also was a big traveler my father traveled professionally because his job took him around the world and me as well as soon as i could i started traveling on my own so okay uh, so what was your favorite trip. what was your favorite country to live in so far do you have one? To live in, before Malaysia, it was Hong Kong to live, but to, to visit and travel Brazil. I still have part of my heart in Brazil. Mm. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's so many. And, and only, I've only traveled, lived in 11 countries and traveled around 2022. So I'm way, there's so much more I need to, to do because there's almost 200, over 200 countries. But guys, travel, see the world. Don't listen to the news. Cut the news completely. Instead, Listen to this beautiful, inspiring podcast, YouTube channels that, that inspire you about travel, about uh, business, about, you know, Giving. mental. Yes. Yeah, about get, doing good. There's a lot of phenomenal people out there, like Nelia, like other people who are doing good, some silently, some more vocally. But listen to them. Feed your mind, just like you're feeding your body with beautiful food. Feed your mind with positive, uplifting and mind bending and mind altering in a positive way, you know, content. So cut off completely the news. And you I, know have I, was to add, <laughs> I have I to add, add Damon, this. that when people go to these countries, they need to do some passion projects. Okay. 
Don't just be yes. a tourist. Go and give back. When you come to Malaysia, there's probably an opportunity for, for you and for, for me together to do some projects here together. Because yes. there's unfortunately there's people that needed a lot of help here as well. Yes. Let's not forget that part of it too. No, but you don't have to travel around the world. You can do it in your own backyard. Even your neighbor, maybe on the outside they look everything is good, but hey, we'll have a conversation other than just hi, how are you? Have a good night. Just get yes. to know them. That's one of the tragedies of the, the modern world. We don't even know our neighbors. You know, sometimes we say, hi, hi, how are you? And we don't even listen to the response. Exactly. And one time I caught because somebody said, not good. And we're like, okay, good, good. Thank you. See you tomorrow. We didn't even hear that they said not good. Yeah. When you say, how are you? Say it in, in, in a way that, you, that shows that you, that you care, not just to be polite, but actually that you care. And you're ready for the answer. You know, when I grew up, I grew up in a small town. The neighbor were like family. For example, not, maybe that's going to make some people laugh. Hey, can I borrow some, some sugar from you? The, 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 the store is closed. Oh, sure. No problem. Come here. Take whatever you want. Maybe you don't need to that nowadays. But, you know, you know, when I grew up, the neighbor just above us, they became family. And they were basically, you know, babysitting us sometimes when parents were working. Now you don't even get to know them mm -hmm. you know it's true we'll reach out to the people beside you we Say all have hi. our heads down we all have our heads down on our phones you know speaking of that you know what they did in korea now you know for the uh, when you cross the street the lights now they put them in on the, on the ground really yes in korea and in thailand because people are always on their phone looking down because there was quite a lot of accent people not looking up to see the lights when they cross the street mm -hmm. so now they put in thailand and korea south korea they put it now lights on the ground it's sad that they have to do that, but it's very but it's ingenious. smart. Yes, very, ingenious. very innovative too. Yes. So, uh, Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. These are the kind of things that, that you see. And honestly, when you come, when you travel, it makes you much more sociable. It makes, makes you get back to things you used to do, but you don't do anymore, which is talking to people, hmm. living a real life, not just a virtual life. You know, Payment, I know we talked about this before, but just to just really quickly, um, sometimes, you know, we all think we have to live the same way, go to school, no. get married, have children like me and you are a big advocate. You so more than me, because I'm still kind of living that lifestyle, but would like to leave that lifestyle. But I know you're all about and I respect that so much. You're all about change the path. Don't follow everybody else. Yeah. Create your own path. You know, be on pioneer, be on trailblazer. This, you know, in this day and age, we don't need to spend our life within 100 miles, 100 kilometers of where you were born. That would be a tragedy as far as I'm concerned. Mm. The world is so beautiful, so big. Again, please, I beg you, stop watching the news. Cut the news entirely. <laughs> I remember telling you that my son was trying to decide what university to go to. And your advice to me was, tell him to take a gap year. He could learn so many skills. And not leave school in all this debt. Do what you love. Free yourself from all of these heavy things. You know what would happen if you were to do that? Happiness. He would really get to know himself. Get to know himself. Because you only learn about you and about life, about the world. When you when you step out of your comfort zone, you, you will learn skills that you will never learn even at Harvard or whatever is the best university in the world. You will experience life because life is about experiencing things and doing things, doing things and all that. But then, that's one aspect of the equation. Travel, and the other one would be learn a high-income skill, something, a business, like whether whatever is your passion, whether it's copywriting, graphic designing, uh, e-commerce. For what you would pay for just one semester of a tuition for a basket-weaving bachelor's that's going to be useless, that can change your life. Mm. If, it, if it works, you will never need a university, you will never need a job. But if... But if it doesn't work, you will learn skills that will put you weight of everyone else. Mm. You have international travel. You will learn a language. You will learn how to actually build a business. You know, the biggest company in the world, Apple, Elon Musk, they don't even look at the resume now. Even me, when I hire someone to do some job for me, for example, freelancers, sure, I, I, I have a look at their portfolio, but I tell them, I give them a job and a task. Okay, do that. Show me how you do Solve it. Solve the problem. Yes. Yeah. And who's going to do it the fastest, the best, the more ingenious way? 
that's a person who's going to get the job or contract or whatever. So again, please. And that's one thing that, you know, Australians, Europeans do a lot after they finish high school. They travel. They take a year, a year off, a gap year. But now with technology, with uh, all this uh, possibilities, options to work online, to work remotely, learn a skill, high income skill. Mm. That can and, and a lot of places in the world, as long as you make $2,000, you can live much, much better quality of lifestyle, infinitely happier, infinitely more fulfilled, alive mm. than anything you can do uh, back home in a so-called corporate uh, instead of Instead of being buried in debt. And so many people finish with this piece of paper. And I'm not saying, you know, some careers you need yeah. that to be a doctor, to be a lawyer, but... So many kids will come out of this experience and not know how to have how to sell themselves, not know how to have a conversation with people because they, they don't really teach that. teach that. But when you're traveling and you're stuck somewhere like you did with the chicken, you figure it out. You have to. I thought you're not going to eat. <laughs> it's a matter of survival. <laughs> exactly. Literally. Payment, I am so grateful for you to come here today and just to share, share your opinions and just encourage us and inspire you did so much inspiring today and you got me excited you got me excited to to travel more and to be more yes. kind and to create more impact and to smile to laugh more yes oh, and i love that and to love yourself to grow. More. Yes. yes and to grow so i have four words for the people that are listening today lead with your heart Absolutely. In my opinion, that's the only way that, that that's the best way to lead. Whether it's travel, life, heartbreak, career, anything. If you lead with your heart, you will not go wrong. Yeah. Because ultimately, again, this life is a buffet for you to experience all kinds of dishes. Like, for example, I did the corporate route. I did the laptop lifestyle. I did the oil fields with rednecks in, in Alberta and Western Canada. I did the sports coaching in, in, in China. I did e-commerce. Now I'm podcasting, YouTubing, uh, uh, author, publisher. And again, I'm loving it. I want, and I don't know. I have, I have no idea what, what life is for me for my next chapter. But this is what life is about. Go experience. Go live. Go live. Woo! With passion. <laughs> yes. Then, Thank you so much, Payman. I appreciate all of your time today. Pleasure all I'm anytime. It's always an absolute blast and pleasure talking to you we connected with kindred souls such a positive energy absolutely love 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 what you're doing in the world you know you. if i could nominate you for the <laughs> for, for some reward i would nominate you for the mo most amazing art of the world because what you're doing in guatemala seriously is 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 phenomenal oh thank, thank you, you so for that. much thank and you i know you're, you're gonna doing. be a Thank you. And I know you're going to be a part of that real soon. I'm, I'm I can't hoping. wait to, 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 to join it, to travel, to, to, to be with you there, but yes. or you can come here. We'll do the same thing here in Malaysia. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank Malaysia, so Indonesia, much. Thailand, whatever. Hey, it's going to be a, a double whammy. You're doing good <laughs> while enjoying yourself, you know? Yes. And and I'll, be, delicious food, you know? Yes. And I'll bring you your very own ukulele. Oh, I would, I would be honored to. <laughs> Thank you, Payman. Which is all mine. Stay safe, stay awesome. Keep shining your light. Keep blessing the world with your presence, with your impact, with everything you're doing. God bless you, my friend. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode. If you enjoyed what you heard, please subscribe or leave a review. See you next week on the Giving Starts With You podcast.